is Emily. Hello, today I'm interviewing Harry Fielder about his new autobiography. And what you're, what you're going to um, ask me about? Um, I'd like to know how the idea for your book came about. It was, it was after my wife died two years mm -hmm. ago. She, she said to me before she died, right, mm -hmm. write your story, tell the people about your life. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's not that important. She said, it is. So in two years, it took me two years, me and a guy called Clive Saunders, yeah. uh, we wrote it. And now it's on sale. Yes. Good. Fantastic. And so you've had such a, a varied exciting career. Yeah. Um, what's the most exciting thing about that? When did it all start? When did you first start the extra work? In I started the extra work in 1966. But I was with a band, I had my own band from mm -hmm. 1958 to 1966. And I was in a pub in Chelsea and someone said, do you want a day's extra work? And I said, I don't know what, it, what that is. And he told me, and it, uh, it was one day on the Saints with Roger Moore. And it wasn't even Roger Moore, it was his driving double. So I thought, oh, well that's not very good, is it? <laughs> but it's, it was good, a great life. And you've got, to, you've got to work hard because you've got to get up at four in the morning yes. and drive to the studio somewhere or drive anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you don't get home, say, till eight or nine at night. So it's not mm -hmm. like an, an office job, is it? No. No, not, not at all. And sometimes you didn't work, so you never got no done. How did you find the work? Did you go to the jobs or did they come to you? A place called Central Casting. Yeah. They was the, they was sending to work. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, I learnt in time have another agent as well, so that they they give you work as well. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I ended up with about four agents, so that you was getting work all the time. But I kept a diary, um, and an agent would phone up and say, "Can you work Tuesday and Wednesday?" And I'd, I'd write in the diary, Tuesday and Wednesday working. And then while I was at work, my wife would uh, answer the phone. It'd be another agent. Can Harry work on the Friday and Saturday? So she'd look in the books and say, "Yeah." You can work Friday and Saturday. And it, in the end, because I've done a lot of years, directors would phone me up and ask, H, can you help us out? So I said, yeah. And they called me H, didn't call me Harry. It's an old copy, so. Oh, I see. Yeah. See, if you was, you're Emily, aren't you? Yes. So you would be E. Hello, right. E. Hello, E. <laughs> I was going to ask you where the name came from. No, it's, uh... it's company. Uh, Helen was H, mm -hmm. and Horace was H. Mm -hmm. And I spelt it, instead of putting H like that, I wrote it down like mm. that. H, A I T C H. So that, that was it. Can you tell me, in your varied career, what was your biggest highlight? Forty Towers through to Star Wars. What would you say was your highlight? Um, working with Hitchcock on a film called Frenzy in uh, 1971 72. And then one day after two weeks, he says to his assistant director, tell that man to get on the lorry and unload it. So he knew my name. He called me that man. <laughs> you were that man. I was that man. And when I said, um, when I get up there with you, Mr. Hitchcock, that man will say hello. So that's great to work with. Great. And what was he like? He was elderly, but he, um, and he was in a wheelchair at that stage. The thought that I'd worked with mm. Alfred Hitchcock, I mean, that's a big buzz. Mm -hmm. That is a big buzz. Have you ever wanted to be more than an extra? Did you want to go, try and go for a lead no, role? No, no, uh, because I did try once and I went on an audition mm -hmm. and the director said, Sit down, here's a script. And I went to write this book. Um, so I'm looking for my bit. And I, I said, um, where's, where's my bit, Gov? He said, That is it. I went, <laughs> not me, I said, I can't do that. So he went, oh, he said, uh, we need a plumber at the end of it who comes in with a line. I said, that do me, I'll do that, I'll mm -hmm. do that. And the line was, um, hello, missus, I've come to look at your pipes. I mean, it's not a good line, was it? But it made me laugh. But I've done lots of bit parts. I was a bit, uh -huh. I was an extra bit part. Yes. Um, and I worked with guys like, Rod Steiger, and I had to say lines to it. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit better than extra, isn't it? And um, how did the lead actors respond to you? Did they? Did you get to know some of them? Um, I worked with Tony Curtis for nearly a year. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Um, 
Who else? Robert Mitchum. There's so many big names. I, could, I mean, but if you go to work in the morning, and of course I was well known by then, when you get there, the um, director or the assistant director say, H, there's a couple of lines here to say. So, yep, okay. It wasn't hard because mm. it was two lines. But if it was a page, oh no, I was lost. I was lost. But I'd done a kids' show for, I went for one day in 1982, it's called CBTV, Thames Television. And I was going one day as a security guard, mm -hmm. but I was a bit dumb, a bit dopey. And uh, the director said, uh, can you say a line for us? I said, yeah, of course, and I've done it. And they said, that was good. Um, do, you want next, do you want to come back next week? I said, yeah. So after a month, they said, do you want to sign a contract? I said, why? For three years. And how did that compare to the extra work actually presenting? Did, did um, you enjoy that more or less? Or? The same. Yeah. Because you, the idea, if you got on a job, I mean, there's, there's some jobs that you wish you hadn't been on there. Uh, rubbish jobs. Mm. Good job we use that word, rubbish. And, um, and you think, oh, I don't want to be here. But you, you've got to be there. But uh, I had a wife and three kids. You've got to go out every week and get a living. Yes. You? So that's what it was about, getting a living. And what would you say to someone who's thinking about following in your yes. footsteps? Would Do you it. recommend? Do it. Um, it's quieter now. I mean, BBC and places like that have stopped doing... I worked at the BBC for 30 odd years. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on EastEnders for 15 years, once a week once a fortnight, but it was a job to go to work and come home again. Yes. Um, but join the union. In this book, in the book, I tell you how I did it. You need an agent and you need to be in the union for safety. I don't know what they get these days, kids. Um, might get 100 quid a day, right, for the extra work. When I started, it was three quid a day. Mm. But that was good. You know, if you've done five days, you've got 15 quid. And wages was about 12 quid a week, and I was getting 15. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's hard. If you're single, it's much easier. Because, yes. But I had a wife and three kids, so you've got to mm -hmm. go and get it. Were there moments when work wasn't coming in, and you were yeah, thinking, you what have I done? No, I never think that, because no. you, you, your brain goes, uh, I'm not working this week so far. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, I used to have a van instead of a car. And people knew I had the van, and they said, H, can you move some chairs for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, two quid, three quid. But it was getting me wages for home. That's what you've got to think of, isn't it? And do you think you'd consider going back into the business? Uh, I think sell-by date might come in a bit somewhere. <laughs> but I did go over to uh, the Harry Potter studios, yes. across, which is very near me, where I live. And I spoke to someone, and I said, because uh, they're doing a Tom Cruise film there now, I said, if there's any scenes, in a bar and you want an old boy sitting there with a pint of Guinness, I said, give me a shout, I can walk across the road to you.